Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerdatorium with Mr. Idea. So, welcome to part two of my evaporative water cooler. Uh, I've already done some of the prep work, so that way you, I, you didn't have to like watch me engineer and it kind of saved me on editing. So, you can see I actually added a couple more holes to the bucket here. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend watching that part first, so you kind of got an idea what we're doing. Um, so, inside the bucket, the first thing that I've done uh, is I've added some mesh to the inside. I just used some silicone uh, to keep it in place. Uh, and what this first piece of mesh will do, this will allow the uh, prevent water from splashing out through the holes. All right, so the other thing you can see is I have a couple of holes here on the bottom. Uh, actually, I've got three holes. The one hole you probably can't see. Um, this one will be for our pump for our water to come up through. Uh, this is just an old uh, aquarium pump for a, a turtle or a frog tank. Uh, and then this piece of pipe screws into here. Um, the purpose of this piece of pipe is so that way um, when the water drains from this bucket into this bucket, uh, it won't, you won't get that dribbling sound. Uh, so it will give us about, uh, about a gallon and a half, two gallons of water uh, until we'll have to fill the system back up again. Uh, and then the third hole is for my float switch, um, which is just made out of a piece of stainless steel uh, rod and some foam insulation. There's a the hole in the bucket on the bottom of the bucket here. There's the hole in the bottom of the bucket, and then there's the hole on the lid. And once this is all assembled, what I'll do is I'll bend this over so that way it can't fall through. And I've already measured and marked this so there's a little black line on here so you can see as the water level will come up and down I can determine how much water I need without having to pull the whole bucket off. Uh, bottom bucket that'll hold our our water all I did was put some uh, foam insulation tape on it this will allow a nice seal between the two buckets so that way if I were to uh, knock the buckets the water can't like splash out through uh, it's a, actually an airtight seal. Uh, I was able to, when I put the buckets together, I had to drill the holes because there was too much air pressure. Uh, the last piece that I, had, I prefabricated is just a piece of tubing wrapped in some fabric. And then I bent up some copper here so that way we can bend this in a circle that'll go on top. And then there's some mesh here that we will wrap around this coil on both the inside and the outside and then this will give us this will be our actual surface that the evaporative cooling actually takes place on. So I, I did play around with this a little bit last night trying to figure out how I want to do it exactly. And I think the moral of the story is I'm just going to zip tie it. And so I've got these nice large uh, panduit straps which are just oversized zip ties and that will easily hold this fabric in place. Okay, let's put this thing in there. Let's see if I can get it in there without screwing it up too much. Okay. Okay, so you can see that we do have an air gap in between the bucket and the side of the copper, but not too much. Okay, I'll put the second one in, just to kind of roll it up here. That way it'll make it easier to put in, and then we'll just kind of unroll it inside. And to hold this one in place, I'm just gonna use some dip ties again, but rather than zip tying it around, we'll you just use them to push back out on the fabric. Okay, as you can see that secures it in place. It's not incredibly tight, but it does in fact keep it in place. Okay, I've got the 
bucket filled up with RO water, or reverse osmosis water. Uh, that way I won't get calcium buildup and stuff. I've got the pump running already, and you can see how this kind of just puts water everywhere, nice and evenly distributed. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back off, and we'll get this thing strapped up on top. Okay, there we go. You can see we got the pipe strapped up to the top, kind of the fabric kind of bunched up so that way you'll know, we'll get sort of contact between the two layers. We'll see how this goes. Now these water lines are still charged. Okay, I got the center fabric put back in and everything kind of assembled. You can see our float switch, how it pushes back up. Just, you know, buoyancy, science, woohoo. All right, let's turn this thing on and see what it does. But uh, yeah, I can see this whole thing saturated now. Um, but what we'll do is once we fill the bucket up with more water, this pump will push more water out and it'll really get some good flow. And all we have to do is put the lid on and hook some fans up and we'll be good to go. Okay, I've got the lid on after making some adjustments. Um, the float switch functions. Uh, so I've got the black line on there for when we're full. So I still need to put more water in it. One thing that I am impressed with is that the it's a silent. I mean, let me get the mic up closer here. So the only thing that is uh, going to make noise is the fan, uh, which is great because what I'll do is I can leave the pump run all the time. The thing uses next to no power at all and then I'll just have the fan itself on the fan controller. Uh, so you'll get evaporative cooling and then when you need more the fan will just uh, increase the amount of evapor evaporative cooling that's going on. Um, so anyway well thanks for watching part two. Um, stay tuned for part three and I will uh, do some benchmarking, get the computer going and see how uh, low we can get these uh, water temps um,